will continue with our discussion on analog to digital converter. Uh, if you recall what we had discussed uh, in the last lecture, we looked at some of the various techniques for AD conversion. We started with uh, the flash AD converter which was very simple in concept, very fast, but requires lot of hardware, lot of comparators, lot of resistances and also a priority encoder. Then we looked at some of the counter based AD converter one was based on an up counter, other was based on an up down counter. Now, in both of these methods, if the total number of bits is n, the number of steps can be 2 to the power n. So, in the worst case, the counter has to count from 0 up to 2 to the power n. So, the worst case conversion complexity was 2 to the power n clock cycles. Now, today we shall be discussing in the third part of our lecture, we shall be discussing a new technique, another technique of counter based AD conversion. This is called successive approximation type ADC. Let me first intuitively tell you that what we are trying to do in this kind of a converter. See here we have 2 to the power n steps. The basic idea is follows that we do not start with 0 and count up, up, up till we reach the level of the input voltage. Rather, we start with the middle 0 to 2 to the power n, we start with 2 to the power n minus 1, that is the middle. Okay? We start with a middle value and check whether that middle value is greater than or less than the input voltage. If it is less than, we have to move further up. If it is greater than, we have to move below. So, in this one comparison, we have reduced the size of the total list to half. So, either we have to look at the upper half or the lower half. So, we repeat the same process. Suppose we see that we have to go to the upper half. We again look at the middle of the upper half. So, again with respect to the upper half, we have to look into the upper half of that or the lower half of that. So, the size of the list is becoming half at every step. So, the good thing here is that instead of 2 to the power n comparisons or trials, we require only n trials. This is a very big advantage. So, let us look into this in detail. This method is called successive approximation type AD converter. Now, for those of you who are familiar with this method of binary search in software, so this method does something similar to that. So, if you have a sorted list of numbers and if you want to search for a number, you start with the middle. So, you take a decision either to look into the left side or the left or the right side, again look into the middle of that half and so on. So, for n numbers the complexity of searching becomes log n log to the base 2, same thing happens here. Okay. So, here so as an analogy, uh, so you can assume that the number we are searching here is the input voltage. Okay. So, we start with the middle of the list as I have said and after comparing the middle of the list, we have to look at either the upper half or the lower half and as I said, if there are 2 to the power n steps, the advantage we gain is that number of steps required is reduced to only n. So, what modifications are required to have this? See earlier we used a counter, either an up counter or an up down counter. Here we use a modified version of a counter, not exactly a counter. This is something called a successive approximation register, which simulates this binary search in hardware. Let us see how it works. Let us take an example of a 4 bit successive approximation register. We start by making the most significant bit 1, that means 1. 0, 0, 0. So, in decimal what does 100 mean? It is 8. 
So, we have a range from 0 to 15. So, 8 represents approximately the middle point. Okay. So, we search the middle. Then we check the output of the comparator whether the input value which you want to convert is less than or greater than this value. If it is less than if you have to go down what we do we change this 1 to 0 and set the next bit to 1. But if we find that it is input value is less input value is greater we have to move up. So, we leave this bit as 1 we set the next bit to 0. So, we set the next bit to 0 always, but either the current bit we reset to 0 or leave it is as it is. You see 0 1 0 0 means 4 which is the middle point of this half and 1 1 0 0 is 12 which is the middle point of the upper half. This process we go on repeating. Okay. So, if there are n number of bits in this word the number of steps we required will, will uh, this will be n only. So, instead of 2 to the power n we have a technique here where we require only n number of steps right. Let us pictorially show it in terms of a decision diagram like as shown in the left. So, as I said for a 4 bit converter I am taking the example of a 4 bit converter we start with 1000. Suppose, the input voltage V in that we have applied that corresponds to the digital output let us say 1001. So, 1001 is my expected output. The way the searching will proceed is as follows. You first make a comparison here. The output of the comparator there will be a comparator which will be comparing the current voltage from a DA converter with the input voltage. If we see that the V in is greater then we have to move upwards you know, will have to follow this link. And the next data we have to compare is 1100 which is 12. This will be half of the upper half right. This is the lower half this is the upper half. Here we check and find out that the input voltage is less because it is lower. So, you will be following this path. What you do? You, you see since you are moving up in the first case this 1 remained as 1 the second bit was made 1 1 1 0 0. But at the next step if you see that it is less what you do? You leave the first one as it is the current 1 you reset it to 0 next bit you set to 1. So, it becomes 1 0 1 0. Then again there is a comparison you find that input is less you follow this path. So, again the previous bits remain the current bit which was set to 1 is reset to 0 next bit is set to 1 1 0 0 1. And here you finally, see it is greater and you arrive at the final value. So, you see you require 1 2 3 and 4 4 comparison steps only right. So, only 4 comparison steps are required to find the final digital value. Let us see the overall schematic now. The schematic looks very much similar to a counter type AD converter. The only difference is that here instead of a counter we use a successive approximation register. Well, you just ignore this convention. So, so, which is MSB LSB these are the 4 bits. So, 4 bits as I said we start with 1 0 0 0 the corresponding output of the DAC is compared by a comparator with the input voltage depending on whether the output voltage of the comparator is 0 or 1 the successive approximation register takes the decision because you start with 1 0 0 0. So, if the output is 0 means V in is smaller you reset this to 0 make the next bit 1. If it is 1 means V in is greater then you keep it 1 make the next bit 0 and you continue this. There are two additional signals as you can see start of conversion and end of conversion. So, at the beginning 
when you want to start a conversion you set this SOC signal to 1. So, this SAR will be initialized to 1000 and the process will start and after the conversion is over the end of conversion which is an output signal this will be activated. So, you know that the conversion is over right. So, conceptually this is very simple. So, let us take a very small example of a 3 bit converter and see that how the signal changes with time while the conversion is going on. Suppose, I am showing the input output curve. So, along the x axis I am showing number of iterations and along the x uh, y axis is the output voltage of the DA converter because we have the DA converter successive approximation register is feeding the data to the DA converter. And this DA converter output is compared with V in right. So, this output of the DA converter we are plotting along the y axis and suppose this is my input voltage V in. So, first iteration we shall be starting with 100 this corresponds to 100 the first iteration here. So, you see this is the level of the voltage it is half of the full scale 4 by 8 V ref this corresponds to 100. Then you compare with V in and find that well V in is greater. So, you have to move up. So, the next value will be 110. So, in the second iteration here you put 110. So, 110 will be equivalent to a level like this 6 by 8 V ref. So, here you see V in is smaller, V in is lower than this. So, you in the third iteration you reset this 1 to 0 make the next bit 1. 101 is 5, it is the lower one this one you find V in is greater. So, in the last step uh, I means you will be moving up and the final result will be 101 this 101 is the final result. So, you see during conversion the output of the DA converter will fluctuate wildly ok unlike a simple counter type where the voltage rises steadily from 0 up to the input voltage level, but here since you are doing something like a binary search the voltage level will fluctuate like this and then it will stabilize ok. This is how the su successive approximation DA converter DA converter AD converter works ok fine. Now, the last kind of converter that you want to talk about here is something called dual slope type AD converter. Now, dual slope type AD converter is accurate is quite accurate, but the problem is that because you have some op amp based circuits you are using here speed of operation is a little slower ok. Let us try to understand how it works. These are the components required as you can see there are 6 things required which you can identify in this diagram op amp based integrator I shall talk about this this is your operational amplifier. Then you have a binary counter this is your binary counter you have a clock you are applying a clock you have some control logic of course, some control logic you have a voltage comparator this is your comparator and you have some electronically controlled switches. There are two switches one is this S 1 other is this S 2. The switch S 1 works as follows this input of this op amp this point is either connected to an input voltage from here or is connected to a reference voltage out here. So, it switches like that.
and the second switch S2, this is just an on off switch, either it is connected or not connected. Okay. Let us very briefly talk about how an op amp based integrator works without going into the mathematical details. Well, you have already seen how an op amp can be used as an amplifier, non inverting and inverting. Now, in an integrator in this feedback instead of a resistance you use a capacitance. So, this looks very much similar to a non inverting non -inverting, inverting amplifier if this is V in this is V out it like this. So, here what happens well, well, well again without going into the derivation if you look at the output voltage, suppose initially the capacitor is discharged, there is no charge because this point is at 0 volt, this because other point is grounded. So, V o will also be 0. So, if you just plot V 0, I am just plotting V 0, this is the 0 level. So, it starts with 0. Now, with time, with a time constant of R c, this, this capacitor will go on charging and because it is inverting it will go in the negative direction. Okay. This is how this integrator works right? and just one point to note is that this slope of this curve or this that means that within a particular time t how much this voltage drops down to this will be proportional to the input voltage. This is something you should keep in whatever voltage you are connecting the rate of change of the output voltage will be proportional to that. So, we are basically exploiting this principle. Okay. So, let us move on we will be explaining how it works. So, uh, just if you move back once, here we are applying a reference voltage or we are applying an input voltage. Okay. Now, the idea is as follows. So, we are showing the output voltage, well actually this is this is actually negative. So, we are showing the positive direction, this is actually negative V int we are plotting. So, this is the output of the integrator this is V int we are saying. Okay. This is the integrator, the output is V int. So, the operation proceeds like this. So, initially at time t equal to 0, we connect the input unknown voltage to be converted at the input. We connect V in to the input and we allow the integrator to operate for a fixed time duration t int t int is fixed. Okay. So, the voltage will change and will reach a certain point here. So, after this t int we connect the input now to the reference voltage, reference voltage is a fixed reference voltage which is given and we measure after how much time now, the voltage will go down because reference voltage has a different polarity. So, if one is positive other will be negative right, the polarities are different. So, the output voltage of the capacitor will change in the reverse direction. So, we measure after how much time the capacitor value is reaching 0 right. Now, the calculation is very simple, first part of it the input voltage whatever you are applying V in divide by this time, this is this level of voltage proportional to this and in the second part reference voltage divide by this time. So, if you just solve this, this time T d int will be proportional to V in by V ref. Now, because V ref is constant this will be proportional to V in. So, if we can measure this time that will be our corresponding digital output. If we use a counter to count this time in some way that will be proportional to V in. Okay. 
this is how it works. Let us see with respect to the diagram again how the thing works. Step by step we proceed starting from time t equal to 0 and we see how the electronic switches S 1 S 2 there are two electronic switches how they are actually controlled right. Okay. So, initially before the conversion starts we are saying t less than 0. So, S 1 is set to ground. So, S 1 is set to ground, S 2 is closed which means the, the capacitor is totally discharged and the output voltage V 0 out here V 0 is at 0 level here. At time t equal to 0 conversion starts, what we do? We open S 2, this S 2 switch is open, we disconnect it. So, now it works as an integrator, this is not there and S 1 is set to V in, we connect uh, this input to this input V in out here. And there is a control logic and a counter, this counter will count up to a certain count value, this will measure this T int. So, we allow this to happen till T int time elapses in T int the voltage will rise up to a level which will be proportional to my input voltage V n right. So, the output of integrator will be actually V n T int by R c which is proportional to V n because T int is constant R c are also constant. Now, at this point at time T int we do two things we set the switch to the reference voltage negative value, V ref is a negative value we apply minus V ref. So, the output voltage of the integrator will start de integrating it will start reducing and this reduction will be carried out with a slope of minus V ref by R c. This comparator out here it checks when the output crosses 0 and in the meantime the counter is reset to 0 and the counter starts counting. So, as soon as the comparator output resets 0 the current value of the counter will be proportional to this T d int and this count value is the required digital output d. That is how the dual slope A d converter basically works. Right. Now, just one last thing here, just here I am showing if the input voltages are changed, the first part we are using a constant time, we called it as T int, right. The difference is that the slope of this curve will just be different, that means the final value at the output of the integrator this will be different. But in the second part, we are applying a constant reference voltage at the input, so that the slope will be the same. So, the time it takes to cross 0 will be different either this or this or this. And if you use a counter to count and see after how long it crosses 0, that d will be proportional to my input applied voltage. So, I have a analog to digital converter starting with V n I have obtained a corresponding proportional digital output. right? So, this is how this dual slope A d converter works. So, with this we come to the end of this lecture. So, if you recall in this lecture we looked at two different methods of A d conversion. One was the successive approximation type which is basically one classic example of implementing binary search in hardware and the second method was a method called dual slope AD converter. Now, let me tell you I just mentioned dual slope is more accurate. Now, the reason why it is more accurate is that well in an integrator in an op amp circuit 
there can be errors in the values of the resistances and the capacitances. You cannot get a component with precisely a value which you want. So, even if there are variations, you are doing it in two phases one is integration, then deintegration. The tolerance of the differences in the value they cancel out. So, the final result is independent of the variation in the component values. That is why we say that the dual slope method is more accurate. So, with this we come to the end of this lecture. Thank you.